To round out everything we are talking about with UI, UI animation, right? You're going to want to animate some UI at some point. So what you can do is come up here into Window and enable your animations and you'll get this like animations workspace and you can just add an animation. Let's call this one button slide in. Now let's say that we want to animate these two buttons, both of these. So we uh, select them. And then we can click this add button and add either of these buttons. So let's add button number four and button number two. You can also add their canvas panel slot if you want to animate anything about that. This is all the information about the button itself. This is how it relates to the canvas panel. Once we have added the buttons, we can click this new plus icon to create a new track. So what do we want to animate about them? Do we want to animate whether or not they're focusable, their transform, so their location and their rotation and that kind of stuff their padding their color their opacity anything that we want we also can still add in the canvas panel slots if we want to for now let's uh, just animate the transform for both of these it'll make a default keyframe here and we're going to go about one second into the future and there we can animate the translation rotation scale and shear to whatever we want it to be so for this, let's say that we want to animate, well, actually not the X, but maybe like the Y. We want to animate it to go off screen, right? And that creates a animation, just like that. And then for this other button, uh, I think what we probably want to do is we want to animate that in the X. So we animate this to the side. And now we have an animation where two buttons go off screen. That's the most simple animation that we could possibly make, obviously. You also uh, can make this a little bit more fancy by like animating in a little bit of shear as they move. Uh, so you animate in like a little bit of this. So it kind of feels like there's some motion to it, right? And then for this, we can probably uh, animate the scale a little bit down. So what we do instead is we just like squash this a little bit. So that way it kind of feels like there is a little bit more movement to it all. That's mostly like just animation stuff. It's fairly rough. Nothing like too technical about this. Now we have this animation as a asset, as a component, whatever you want to call it, on this widget. So we can play this, uh, let's say, when we press this button. So let's actually add in some text to this button so that we can recognize it. Uh, this button. Oh, these are not just normal buttons. Well, that's okay. We'll just add in a new button. That's fine with me. Uh, a new button here that's going to have a bit of uh, text in it. So let's put in the text. And when we press this button, we'll play this animation uh, in the forward direction. So we have this button, we have unclicked, and then we can play animation. From there, we can choose a animation, but you see nothing pops up here. If we go into our variables, you can see we have a category called animations where we just have automatically populated all the animations we made. So we can play this animation like this. We can play it at any start time. We can play it a number of times on a loop. We can play it either forward or in reverse or in ping pong, which is first forward and then back in reverse. We can play it at any speed that we want and we can restore the state of the widgets or not once the animation is finished playing. So by default, it doesn't restore the state. So when we play the animation, it will keep these buttons off the screen. If I set this to restore state, it will play the animation and then everything will jump back to its original position. Now, depending on the version of Unreal that you're working with, uh, binding to the end of an animation might be different. Uh, in the newer versions, you get a animation widget uh, handle out of this, which is just a handle to reference back to an animation that is playing. In older versions, you get an object reference out of this, which has some event dispatches on it, which you can assign to, uh, which are like animation started, animation stopped, animation finished, some of those, right? Uh, in 5.6 and beyond, it seems like those have been upgraded to being events on the widget itself. So if I look for uh, animation finished here, you see that it is an event on the thing itself. So anytime an animation finishes, this event will run with a object reference to what animation just finished. So we can check whether or not that animation is equal to a specific other animation. And if it is, we can uh, do 
whatever. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a do once uh, node in this case. Uh, and that's going to uh, play the animation again, but this time it will play it in reverse after a delay. So we uh, delay for, let's say, a second. Then we play the animation again. Everything is going to be the exact same, but we're just going to play it in reverse. And then when that finishes, it's going to trigger this again, but this do once node will have closed, so it won't play it again again, right? So uh, that way, whenever we click on this button, we also want to reset the do once node. So this is kind of making our own like ping pong with a delay in between. Just to show you that we can play forward and backward. We have this event dispatcher uh, or this event rather uh, that can trigger when an animation finishes playing and all that kind of stuff. So when we press this button, it should play the animation. Then wait a second, and play it in reverse, and then we can press the button again afterwards. Obviously, if we want the animation to not be able to be like interrupted by another button press, uh, we can put in a gate which will start as being opened and we'll put in a sequence where we play animation first and then we close the gate and once this is all uh, finished we will open the gate again this is a little bit messy with number one all the splines going everywhere uh, also this doesn't technically wait for this portion of the animation to be finished now so we would need to like look at this again and i don't really feel like doing that to be honest with you uh, so now we have this which plays the animation wait a second and plays it in reverse and we can do that over and over and over again so as you can see by the way uh, as we are in the process of playing it back i can click the button again and it just kind of like cuts to the start of the animation again so the code can use a little bit of reworking here but i can spam the button all i want in the first part of the animation and it's not going to reset because of the gate uh, and the do once that we set up so that's the basic idea behind widget animations. Uh, obviously, you can animate whatever you want, right? If we have, uh, for instance, the material that we made in a previous video, uh, we have this uh, UI material that I made, right? This scrolling texture, which is no longer actually a scrolling texture, but a rather a health bar kind of deal. Uh, we can add that as well, and we can animate the parameters on this too. So. If we add a track, we can add a track for the um, material, and then the material itself will tell you all the parameters that it has exposed. So we can animate this material's color. So we can animate this from being uh, green, which is the default, uh, all the way up to, let's say, slightly less green and more blue. And then it will interpolate between those two colors. So if you have more complicated shaders which have multiple parameters maybe a parameter for like how much this thing is filled up uh which we uh, could do right we made that at some point like this is not a parameter at the moment but if we convert this to a parameter we'll just call it param that's fine for now uh we'll see that i can now add that parameter as well and i can animate it as easily as this so with that you should be able to make some cool animations for your widgets and i think you also now know everything you need to know to get started making mostly whatever you want with widget blueprints. Obviously, there is a bunch of more detailed stuff in specifically like these appearance uh, settings that, that we haven't really gone that deep into. And there's a couple of widgets like this optimization widget here that we haven't really gone into. The background blur is another one that we haven't gone into, but it's pretty self-explanatory some of the primitives, but I think you can figure those out for yourself for the most part because they're not that complicated. So hopefully you make some awesome UIs with all of this information and maybe in the future I'll dive in deeper with some more advanced, like fully built out UIs as example using all of this stuff. And a very big thank you to all my patrons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And a huge thank you to my Cave Big Brain tier supporters, which care more for coding than impulse control, Earl Monserville Erno, my Cave Student tier supporters, Oiku, and my Cave Digger tier supporters, Mauricio Ferrias.